Hi, my name is Valerie. I go to Lahana High School. I'm a senior and I'm taking Honors English 4. <laughs> the reason I chose my story is because it was the most recent one and it was all I could think of at the time. Four. I started my story by brainstorming and after I brainstormed I chose three topics that I could really write about and then from that I narrowed it down to one and then I wrote my story. And then I did some drafting and I finalized it. My name is Stella Ortega. I'm a senior at Lahana Junior Senior High School and I'm in Honors English 4. I knew I wanted to do my narrative essay on the Rockies game from the very start. After some organization, some brainstorming, I was able to put together and make the story you guys hear now. With me as soon as I walked out the door and up the stairs into my room. As soon as I walked in my room, I had the urge to lock the door behind me, but I proceeded without locking it. To the computer desk, sat down, and turned on the computer. I took out my phone to try to check the time, but it was no use. I killed the battery after using it for a large portion of the day. I also forgot my charger at my cousin's house, so there was no way to charge it. The computer screen started to flash on, so I set the phone on the desk and continued to use it. After being on the computer for so long, but all I could think about was the feeling in the back of my head that something was not right. A few hours passed. I checked the time on the computer, 11.34. I couldn't believe I was on the computer for that long. It only seemed to me like I was on the computer for just an hour. Suddenly, the computer shuts down. It was strange because the computer was designed to stay cool for well over 48 hours. I felt around the back of the computer to see if it had overheated. It was cold as ice. Then I hear the desk vibrating. It was the dead phone. When I checked it earlier, I couldn't even turn it on because it was so dead. The feeling of the back of my head seemed to get worse by the minute. The dogs then began to bark from the kitchen. Grabbing my phone and keys, I rushed down the wooden stairs and run through the corridor that led through the kitchen. To my surprise, the dogs were whimpering in the corner as if something or someone had struck great fear into them. I could see the fear emanating from their shaking bodies. I knew at that very moment that it was time to leave. It was now or possibly never. The feeling of danger seemed to overwhelm me, but I reacted quickly to grab the dog kennel and put the dogs inside. I ran out of the door and slammed it in a single motion. I hesitated to lock the door for the fear of my own safety. As I walk out of the door, the street light in the corner of the block shuts off. At this point, I'm fearing for my life. My breathing was heavy as I ran towards the car, setting down the dog kennel and locked the door with trembling hands, and then proceed to load the dogs. I get inside of the car and shut the door. For a second, I had a feeling of solitude and safety, but that would not last. The dead phone starts to play the prelude from the song Liquid Swords by Jezza. I was frozen with fear and could not move at all. A black ghostly figure appears in front of my car. The dogs start to whimper and howl uncontrollably. It felt as if I was staring death straight in the face. I run out of the door and slammed it in. In an instant, the ghostly figure vanishes and I can finally move again. I cram the keys into the ignition and peel out with the car and take off to my grandmother's house. When the dogs and I arrived, my grandmother came to the door, wondering what was going on. You look like you had just seen a ghost, she said. I did, I replied. I then proceeded to tell her the story about what happened that day. We go back the next day to investigate what might have happened. Nothing seemed to make sense. How could the phone turn on, start playing music, and how could the street lights turn off? These incidents still seem to be a series of unexplainable events. The Little Joy. Today was the day that I finally get put out of my misery. After carrying a baby for nine months, I was ready to have it. It was June 30th, the day after my due date, and they decided to induce me. I went in at 7 o'clock, and they started giving me an ultrasound. Felt my stomach and said the baby will be about 6 to 7 pounds. I was pretty happy about that because I was only 15 and didn't want a big baby. They hooked me up to IVs and the belt. The belts measured the contractions in the heartbeat. The baby's heartbeat was great and were right where they wanted it. They gave me some medicine and after a few hours the contractions <coughs> were starting starting and they weren't that bad. But as time progressed they got worse. By three o'clock they gave me another medicine to increase labor more. I wasn't dilating fast, so they made me walk around the hospital. 
I hated it so much because all I wanted to do was lay down and relax. <coughs> Finally, I got to sit down and try to sleep. I couldn't sleep at all because I was shaking from the contractions. It was 3 o'clock and they asked if I was ready for the epidural. I said yes. And they covered my back with iodine, then had me bend over and put the tube in my back. I was so scared, but it didn't even hurt. Then they covered my back with tape. I then laid down and got a catheter. It hurt so much. It was worse than the contraction. It was around 8 o'clock and the epidural had basically worn off and I wasn't ready. Uh, around 9.30, they checked me and I was ready. I started pushing, but by then the medicine had worn off. I pushed for an hour straight and I was so tired. And right when they were going to get the four steps, he came out. They laid him on me to wipe off, wipe him off, but I was so happy I cried and I couldn't do anything. The moment, that moment was the happiest moment in my life. They took the baby and he weighed eight pounds and five ounces. That day was the happiest day of my life. Everyone wanted to hold him because he was so small and cute. Now he's already two and very smart, handsome boy. I learned that having a baby is a very happy moment and worth it. Plain Adventure by Valerie Foster. My home state, the gorgeous sunshine state. I couldn't wait to go on vacation and visit some family, which is always a great time. Unfortunately, none of my brothers or sisters could go. So it would be just me, my dad, and my nephew on the trip to beautiful California where the palm trees glisten, the sun always shines, and the sky dances with the wind. Since there was always at least six of us when we would go, we would just drive because any other transportation would be too expensive. My dad got to thinking, like usual, and thought maybe we should go on a plane. Now I'm definitely not one for heights, so my reaction was a little biased. I wanted to go for the experience, but then again I was terrified, and I really didn't have a choice. Other than going to be on a plane, I was really excited for the whole trip. The next week we get the details of the trip kinked out, and I order the plane ticket. Finally, the day had come, and it was about that time to get up and start the glorious vacation that I had been waiting three excruciating months for. All three of us had finished getting ready, and everything in the car was packed and ready to go. <sighs> My dad locks the door, and we were finally on our way to the Denver International Airport for the very first time. My mindset during this time was, I can't wait to eat and buy stuff, when in reality I should have been thinking about the joy of seeing my family. On our drive up there, we played games almost the whole way through. I had finally got the chance to punch my dad without getting in trouble. Every Oklahoma, Texas, and Kansas license plate, my nephew would try to his hardest to beat me and my dad to the punch. Unfortunately, it didn't happen, and he lost. After a nap, we arrive in Denver, and that's when things started to not go as well. Of course, you can't go anywhere without there being a problem, so my dad's check was supposed to be deposited into my account in the morning, and it was already 10 a.m. with no money, and we expected it at 6 o'clock. After a nap, we arrive in Denver, so we were very worried that something went wrong and that we wouldn't have any money. Not only that, but neither me or my dad had been to the Denver airport, so we were very lost on everything, parking, luggage, flights, and gates. It was a very frustrating time, but we finally managed to find where we needed to be. We then had time to figure out the whole money situation. We called the bank and the employer and the main bank so the manager can approve the transaction, and within 15 minutes, we were back in action. We get to the gate and watch other planes take off until they were ready for us to board. So we were... My nephew had already experienced it, but slightly remembers. Then there's me and my dad in awe. It was finally time to board. With fear and anxiety in my stomach, we sit down and wait for instructions. All I could do was look around and be amazed at everything I had never seen before. Pulling things out, pressing buttons, and of course looking out the window. It was all perfect and I just couldn't wait to see my family. After hearing we're about to take off, so please fasten your seatbelts from a lovely stewardess, my heart just dropped. I had heard many different things about the takeoff and I wasn't a fan of it. So I prepared myself and was ready. The plane starts cruising forward, back and sideways. It was a while before we actually left the ground. 
the whole time my heart's in a cardiac arrest and I'm just terrified holding my nephew's arm, it honestly wasn't as bad as I thought it'd be. We slowly start to come off the ground and tilt way back. It felt like the start of the worst roller coaster and you could just think of your last breath. We finally get into the air and balance out instead of being tilted back. One of the most beautiful sights I will ever see will be looking outside the airplane seat window and looking down at the clouds. I can say I've been lucky enough to look down at clouds rather than looking up. It was honestly the best feeling, the soft white clouds looking like cotton with the crystal blue background of sky. It cleared my mind and made me think of all the beautiful things in life. Definitely very relaxing and to think I was first afraid of it. At some point when I looked out it was completely white. We were actually flying through a cloud. It did have some effect on my mind. It was blank and I started to get a little dizzy. It was such a long day and after being so calm, I decided to take a nap. I get woken up by the flight attendant saying, we're about to land in LAX airport and to fasten seat belts once again. In a way I was excited because I had become a little sick and I couldn't wait to see my grandpa. But then again, I didn't want to leave the clouds. The rest of their vacation was really fun and beautiful. The air trip back is a whole nother story full of flight delays and people. Overall, my first airplane travel had its ups and downs from the time I woke up that day until the time we came back from the vacation. It's definitely something I want to do again somewhat soon. I learned so much about the true beauty and life and value. I was happy to experience it. The best part was definitely being above the fluffy majestic clouds and having some time to myself. It's hard to describe something that leaves you speechless. I wish everyone could experience it. Rocky's Game by Sal Ortega The large metal gate slowly raised, revealing the bright lights. I'd always dreamed of being under these lights, and now it was finally happening. My dream had finally come true. I was walking out on Coors Field, even if it was only because my baseball team had been asked to take part in a baseball parade that marched around the outskirts of the field on the warning track. This was my moment, and I was going to savor it. Still, it was hard to believe that less than five hours ago, I was sitting at home with nothing more than a dream in my heart and an image in my head. I stepped out of the door, ready for the long trip to Denver for my first ever professional baseball game. We jumped into the car and started our journey to Coorsfield. The ride seemed like it took forever, but slowly we got closer and closer to our destination, and my excitement was about to shoot through the roof of the car. Pueblo, Springs, we were getting close, and now I almost couldn't control my excitement. Finally, we hit Denver, and I knew that my dream was finally about to come true. Pulling up to the field was probably one of the most exciting moments that I could remember, and I was dying to get inside and finally live out my dream of being at Coors Field and even being on the field. We pulled up to the back of the field. I looked to my left, red 1964 Mustang. I knew whose it was. It was Troy Tulewinski's. I couldn't believe that I was actually this close to hit my idol's car. We passed the player's parking lot and moved towards the back entrance to the field. We were greeted by a representative of the Colorado Rockies, and that's when my heart exploded. Opened his mouth, and out came the words that I will probably never forget. Hi guys, are you ready to take your walk on the field? He led us through a large door and told us that in a matter of moments, we would be walking on the field for thousands of fans to see us on the jumbo screen and be jealous. The large metal gate slowly raised, revealing the bright lights. I'd always dreamed of being under these lights, and now it's finally happening. My dream had finally come true. I was walking out on the Coors Field, even if it was only because my baseball team had been asked to take part in a baseball parade that marched around the outskirts of the warning track. This was my moment and I was going to savor it. Still, it was hard to believe that less than five hours ago, I was sitting at home with nothing more than a dream in my heart and an image in my mind. After the baseball march, we went straight to our seats and watched the game. Thankfully, that game was a very good one for the Rockies. They even hit a home run no more than five seats away from me. Needless to say, that was one of the funnest and best days that I could remember. We won that game beating the Pirates 9-5, which was also a very important game for the playoffs.